Welcome to um, the webinar. Um, uh, this session is about the data site journey. And so what we're going to be talking a bit about is reflecting on our progress um, in line with our strategic plan, but also envisioning the future and going to take a moment to um, gather some insights um, from you all about some of our progress to date, but also um, some insight and, and thoughts from you in, in envisioning the future. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Bass. I'm the executive director at Datasite. Uh, I'm based in Amsterdam. Um, and it's really fantastic um, to be able to have these opportunities to talk together with the community. So with that, I'll jump right in. Um, I'd like to uh, take a moment and, and just kind of think about this as a what if. And, and when we talk about being purpose driven and as a collective global community, what do, what do our collective efforts set out to do? And so um, if I took this into a what if statement and, and thought about this, what if we could transform the landscape of research and knowledge sharing by seamlessly connecting every research output and resource so throughout the entirety of the research lifecycle, making these effortlessly discoverable, citable and reusable on a global scale. Imagine the impact that this would have on academia, on innovation and the progress of human knowledge and, and our impact on society. And that very much is true to why we exist as a community at Datasite and what we're doing across the ecosystem. And it's our collective effort. It's not just about the Datasite core services. It's about the collective ecosystem and different systems that are all connected and the investment that we all make both from a financial, but also resource point of view in building this ecosystem and working across the global community. And so this is really exciting. I think data sites at a really pivotal moment in our journey. Um, we've had a lot of time to, to stabilize and, and reflect. And I think we're starting to see the power of some of the technologies that we're employing, but also the power of the global collective, the global community um, in working together um, we've also seen more and more uh, folks in the community participating in the data, data site uh, infrastructure talking about the, the value of being a community and, and working together. So that's really exciting. And with that, I will move on into uh, taking a, a moment to reflect on our foundation and, and what, is, what is this strategy that we, we collectively working towards. You've heard me mention community a few times already. And this is really important that as data site that we we cognizant of the fact that we are a global community that has a common interest. And this interest is in sharing research outputs and resources are openly available and connected so that their reuse can advance knowledge across and between disciplines now and in the future. This spans the entirety of the research lifecycle. And so from samples and images through to data and preprints. And this is something that data site has done right from the beginning, we've had great literature and text documents um, with, within the data site community right back from 2012. Um, and so we continue on this journey together and in enabling the creation and management of persistent identifier uh, metadata records, integrating these services into various workflows and facilitating the discovery and reuse of research outputs. The community continues to grow. It's really exciting. We've got over uh, 2,950 repositories. I'll talk a bit about um, how we have a lot of efforts around global adoption and, and equitable access. Uh, we span 52 countries from the membership, obviously recognizing that the repositories extend well beyond those 52 countries. So we have even more coverage if we look at the, the um, repository level. We have 55 million DOIs registered. Um, obviously, we're very mindful that this could be a vanity metric, and I'll talk in a moment a bit about the use of these DOIs and specifically the trends that we're seeing. Um, we want to make sure that these DOIs are being used. And we have over 1,350 organizations that um, are behind all of these repositories because a repository doesn't necessarily need to be a member or, or a consortium organization, but be associated with one of those in order to be part of and, and work within the technical uh, infrastructure of the community. Our efforts are really on a discovery layer um, around 
uh, finding and connecting research in data site commons. And so data site commons is really the consolidated discovery layer user interface that we've been focusing on. And so this includes both works, people, organizations, and now repositories. Um, and then behind this, we, we have the GraphQL API that allows us to, to traverse these different entities and, and focus on different nodes within the uh, research lifecycle and look at the different connections and aggregate information. And I'll show some examples of that in, in a moment. It's the collective coordination that's important. And so we broadly classify the things that we do into four categories. So promoting reuse is around um, sharing and interoperability of, of metadata between different systems and, and different ecosystems, enabling discovery. So having that uh, metadata harvestable and reused, um, and then integrating workflows. So using APIs and different tools to streamline those workflows. And then at our core around creating DOI metadata records for these different outputs and resources that we have um, across the community. Obviously members are, are focusing across the board, integrators. So if we look at our service provider program, the different technologies that exist in the community are focusing on integrating. They also enable discovery. They also promote the reuse of metadata. Um, collaborators um, do, do both um, in, in harvesting information and, and, and promoting that reuse. And then there's a big um, uh, uh, effort around uh, policy makers and, and making responsible decisions together as a community to advance our efforts and, and also being mindful of uh, perverse incentives that might be created, particularly if we look into things like metrics and, and being really careful about avoiding the, the pitfalls of what we have with impact factor and how do we as the, the data site community move that forwards together. These shared infrastructure services um, are, are a bit more detailed on this slide. Um, and creation of DOIs is you know really there to make research outputs and resources discoverable. Integrating workflows is, is enhancing these research works, workflows. Uh, enabling discovery allows us to um, understand more about the influence of research and promoting reuse is, is really, um, I, I guess, addressing the concept of into once reuse often. And so things like ORCID auto update and linking between different infrastructures um, is the work that happens here. To briefly touch on our uh, strategic plan, this was a nine month process, consultation process that we underwent in 2021. And this plan exists from 2022 right through to 2025. Uh, this plan is also, and, and I think we, we're we quite proud about this, that the plan is two pages. The first page is really our, our mission, vision, and a preamble. And, and the actual essence of the plan is one page. And that was intentional in the sense that we didn't want a multi-year strategic plan. Sometimes we see these plans that are 20 pages long and then we get to 2025 and, and we realize, well, this is fairly outdated. And so we really focused on drilling into what are the core pillars that we need to address as a global community in order to ensure our success and further our mission and, and purpose as, as a charitable organization. And so very briefly going through those pillars, pillar one, is really focused on easy, efficient, responsive community services for, for the community. And so this involves a lot of work around stability, but also um, workflows, um, different governance groups that address these. Pillar two is focused around connecting scholarly resources through metadata. So metadata is really core to a lot of the work that we do. And so the, these connections and relationships between the different uh, outputs and resources is key. And so focusing on that so that we can track the influence um, of, of the research and, and, and impact. And then finally, the, the third pillar connecting and, and identifying all resource types held by research organizations globally. And so this is our focus on making sure that we are addressing all of the needs of, of the community. And an example is uh, our partnership with IGSN, making sure that samples are, are a big part of what we do, but also um, looking at some of the things around the grant ID pilot that we spoke about earlier today, um, looking at instrument IDs, DMP IDs, making sure that we're addressing these needs as, as they uncovered in the community. 
Um, and then finally, I'll just mention that uh, you'll see at the bottom there, the, the values. And, and I mentioned this specifically because as a community led organization, and as a global community, it's important that we have core values that um, are core principles in, in the work that we do every day. This is something that I know the data site team really um, takes seriously and, and is something as a community that we want to focus on a lot um, in, in the future or we'll continue to focus on in the future. If I go into some of the strategic initiatives, so in line with our mission and vision, we, we obviously actively participate in uh, various initiatives and lead some of these. So um, one area being data metrics, and this is around the, the adoption and implementation of responsible data metrics. And an example here is our efforts in leading the Make Data Count initiative. We also do a lot of work around identify registries and communities where we either operationally or financially or both um, support various efforts uh, and so the research organization registry raw as we know it um, data site run the technical infrastructure and do the technical development for that idsn we run the uh, registration services for idsn using our core services and the global access program is really focused on partnering with communities and, and not um, trying to say well this is the way things are done it's really about how do we work and address the specific needs and challenges of those communities. And I'll talk a bit about that in a moment. And then finally, um, under repository discovery, contributing to the development of repository discovery initiatives. And so we have a lot of effort and, and coordination uh, with RE3 data in this regard. And so with these strategic initiatives, and if we look at the strategic plan, we take this multifaceted approach and making sure that these initiatives are running throughout the different pillars um, from the um, operational point of view. As, as the team, we really look at this very closely each year in our annual vision, but also in our quarterly uh, goals that we, we set up and, and track what are the key objectives that we're working towards to make sure that we're moving towards these uh, towards our, our common uh, vision and mission as, as an organization and making sure that this cascades down, that everything, if, if I sit at my desk each day and, and think about what I'm doing, it's very clear about how this is having an impact in the community and relates back to the strategic plan. And so we always link these right through to ensure that we're true to addressing the needs of the community. So that's really our foundation. I'm going to now I'll jump into um, some really exciting highlights. Obviously, the, these are a few things that I picked out and it's impossible to pick out everything that we've, we've done in the year to date. Um, we're already nine months through the year and we we um, fast approaching the end of the year. Um, it's crazy how we, we always get to this point in the year and think, well, gosh, like the year has been flying along. Um, but it's really been a, a, a an exciting year for us as a community and and um, really rewarding. And so I wanted to share some some of these um, highlights with you. So one thing that we've noticed is increased adoption and re, uh, usage. Uh, over the last year, we've seen a really significant um, surge in in the uh, use of data site DOIs. Uh, we've also um, seen, obviously, an increase in registration of DOIs, um, but it's really important that we we note that these are being used um, actively. And so um, since the start of this presentation, we, we've had almost 30,000 resolutions um, of, of data site DOIs. This equates to around 1,600 resolutions every month at, at its peak. And so we're starting to see some really nice, nice traction and, and movement around the outputs and resources that are registered um, and made available by the research organizations around the world. We're also seeing a lot of um, API requests and around 700,000 API requests every day. Obviously, this does fluctuate and month to month and lots of changes, um, but really important to see that, okay, our, our services are really being used and, and something that we want to track more closely going forward. We've also seen um, a lot of um, effort going into improved services and functionality. And so the, the engineering team specifically has had some really um, fundamental um, successes in, in stabilizing the service. Uh, not that it was completely unstable, but really looking at some fundamentals. Obviously, there's continuous work that we can do in this area, but really seeing some really good 
stability in the system, addressing some core things that, you know, for a long time, you know, there were capacity issues and it's not always easy to get to these as as small organizations. And so um, some really good work happening, um, but also some really exciting community-driven functionality that's been released. And so I'll show one example of some of the visualizations in DataSite Commons, but this goes across the board. It extends to some of the bugs that are reported by the community, some of the metadata enhancements that come from the community, some of the, the features and tweaks that that um, we are talking about and, and a lot more happening and moving moving forwards on um, and also working on a more iterative basis and so we're trying to get more iterative releases out and breaking up releases as opposed to waiting for several months or a year and then doing a big release um, rather iterating getting these releases out and getting feedback from the community um, and improving and so continuing that cycle is really important so just noting that that is a collective effort, obviously engineering leading the charge in kind of executing this, but um, also the collective effort from all of the governance groups and community members that are involved. We've also seen some really remarkable community growth. And, and so this is exciting to see that we continue to um, increase the diversity of the membership across the globe. We mentioned we have members in 52 countries, uh, repositories extending well beyond that. Um, but this really um, is, is core to our vision and mission and what we're trying to do at, as a global community. Uh, over 300 repositories have joined data sites um, this year. And, and really, we focus on being part of a community. It's not just a service. It's how do we work together as, as a community? And something that we're looking at quite closely now is that 25% of our membership is represented by the region's covered under the global access program. So these emerging regions, and we want to make sure that this number continues to increase to, to grow our, our um, um, diversity of, of, of our community. Um, and so the community engagement is really doing some, some fantastic work in, in, in um, leading our efforts here and working with the community. We've also launched a number of strategic initiatives. And so um, these are, are far reaching. I'll mention two specifically in a moment, moment but also you know, um, executing against uh, the IGSN partnership. And so this was a big strategic initiative um, that, that we looked at. We have the global access program and the make data account um, um, effort, which I'll talk about specifically in a moment. But really, the, these efforts um, continue to have impact across the strategic pillars and, and are really uh, being uh, uh, meeting the needs of the community and really good positive feedback coming back from the community. I mentioned I'll talk about the Global Access Program. I think it's one that um, a lot of people in the community are really excited about and, and myself included. And this was a really important milestone for us it is setting up the Global Access Program, which is aimed to enhance access to the open infrastructure services that we provide as a community. And so reducing barriers and, and really focusing on how do we work with underrepresented um, regions in, in the uh, knowledge sharing community. And this was made possible by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative and is an ongoing initiative that we continue to work on. We also uh, launched the effort towards the Global Data Citation Corpus. So this is an effort uh, that um, is focused on creating a central aggregate open repository of data citations around the globe. It's funded by the Wellcome Trust and helping us accelerate our efforts in here. In, in this regard, um, but also partnering with folks like CZI in um, harvesting and, and pulling out uh, citations from different sources, working with the Embro ABI, working with folks like Crossref, um, and really the, the intention of revolutionizing uh, data practices um, globally. Um, so really exciting work happening, and we we really pleased. We also welcomed Aracha to the team who is the Make Data Account Director um, under this initiative and, and leading our efforts here. Yeah. And then I wanted to take a moment in, in sharing something which um, I think is really fantastic in um, 
really bringing it together. And it's not that this is the only functionality that we have, but I think it's just a really nice example when we talk about connecting research and advancing knowledge. This is one, um, uh, I guess, example of this. And, and for me, um, as a non-technical person, I can't always, uh, you know, work with APIs at a, at a very detailed level and then do very complex things. Um, and so it was a really nice opportunity for, for me personally, but also I think for the team and the community to see this really coming to fruition and, and really demonstrating some of the power of the things that we've done. And so this is a DMP ID, and this is um, some of the work that we've done very closely with uh, the folks at California Digital Library and also specifically within the Fair, Fair Island project. And we've also got some related efforts that will extend to project identifiers um, and, and rates, um, as well as grant IDs with the same concept. Um, and so let me... Um, show you what I mean by this. So here's a, a data management plan that's been registered. You can see the resource type there. You can see the description, the different creators, contributors, as well as the different um, uh, citations and references linked to this data management plan. You can also see the different work types, so the articles, the data sets, um, the different licenses available, the contributors and their specific roles towards each of the data set or the journal article um, or, or the report. Um, and then you have each of the individual records that's linked to this data management plan. And you can draw into this as an example. So if there's an article that's registered with Crossref, this would appear there and you would be able to draw into this. You could see the description of this again um, on all individual work records in Datacite Commons. We can link it through to to ORCID as an example. Um, there's also all of the related works here and related identifiers appearing here. And then you could also go and download metadata. If it's an open access article, you'll be able to, to access this, but you would also be able to access obviously data sets and anything that is available. So really nice example of this all coming together. And, and I think this is um, a lot of what we talk about in, in the vision in, in doing this really coming together. And so we really pleased with with where we are and there's there's obviously a lot of uh, API technology behind this there's a lot of metadata that's part of this um, but also then the front end pieces that come together and so as we continue to expand and grow as a community and, and apply this you know within our strategic plan um, I think there's some some really good opportunities for us so with that I wanted to take a moment just to um, gather some reflection from all of you. I've mentioned some of the highlights that I've pulled out for this year. It would be fantastic to hear from you. Obviously, some of the things that we've mentioned um, might might be interesting to you and, and some things that um, you were excited or pleased about. But also feel free to share some, some other things if there's um, other items that uh, were, were interesting. Um, we have posted the mentee in the link, and I'll switch to that now. We ran the session earlier today, so we do have some comments in there already. Um, and so I will quickly go to present that. Um, and so the question is really um, reflecting on our collective efforts in 2023. What are some of the things you're really pleased or excited about? And this could even extend to some functionality or things that you're doing on your side and within your system. So um, please feel free to, that would be fantastic to hear a bit from you on, on some of the things that you were excited or pleased about. Yeah, really nice talking about, you know, the further leveraging the PID graph and, and you know, the GraphQL API and data site commons, some of the integrations um, that we've been working on have been really good. Metadata, um, and that's also a big theme we'll talk a bit about as we env envision the future, some of the things that we want to um, prioritize and make sure that we're working on. Um, Global access program. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think a really important milestone um, <coughs> that, that we reached and and something that is is definitely supported as as a priority from the board point of view and and um, really core to us as a community. 
Yeah, and I think that comment around uh, regions like Africa and Latin America um, built, built on the Global Access Programme. Um, I think uh, Mohammed mentioned, I, I can't remember, you, you know, it's always interesting. I, I sometimes arrive at uh, webinars and it's in a language that I don't speak. And I think for me, it, it almost is, it, it's such a proud moment to be part of a community where we truly are working in, in this open form that that it's not just a single language obviously you're listening all to me in English unfortunately my language abilities aren't that good but it's it's really fantastic that we can um as a team and and work across the community in different languages and so that's been really exciting um data usage traceability and I think informing those, those decisions um has, has really been important I'll leave this um, open for a moment. Um, you're welcome to continue adding because we will look back at this um, uh, after the session um, and I will switch back to the presentation and continue, but feel free to add things that um, you think are, uh, are we're exciting or that you were pleased about um, in the last um, Yeah. So uh, jumping to a bit, bit more forward, thinking and envisioning the, the future. These are our collective efforts as a community. And so these are things that we, we continue to work on together. Um, and these are the things that we are starting to look at prioritizing in 2024. Obviously, we're still going through a process of gathering feedback from the community, looking at things like the roadmap insights, um, gathering feedback from the different governance groups. And as we, as we form or finalize the the plan for 2024, um, the, this will be really helpful in, in gathering some feedback. So let me talk through a, a few of the key things. Um, one thing that we really want to make sure that we're addressing in 2024 is being the trusted partner for persistent identifier services um, within the global research community. So working with research organizations around the globe. And what this involves is making sure that we're forging stronger bonds and trust with our members and the community stakeholders around the globe. Uh, we obviously, um, in, in this engagement activity, also want to build on certain technologies. And so building on the grant ID services pilot is, is one, one effort here and, and scaling this across the community. Um, we obviously want to continue to look at the uh, outputs and resources that we support within the community and make sure that that continues to address the needs of the community. And then also working with key communities similar to our efforts with IDSN, their identify communities, there's geographic communities um, around the globe. And so partnering with these communities is really helping us build a, a more comprehensive ecosystem and, and working together. Metadata completeness, and that came up as um, some things that um, are, are really important in, in the previous session. And so uh, a big effort around accelerating metadata completeness. And this is around empowering our community members with different tools and resources to, to facilitate both the creation of metadata so we can create metadata records, but also it's the enrichment and continuing to make sure that that metadata is up to date and, and useful for the community. And this is through providing metadata insights through different tools and technology, um, looking at ingesting relational metadata from third parties. So as an example, and particularly within the data citation corpus, there are uh, third parties that know about a relationship between say a journal article and a data set as an example, but they're not the uh, authority that can update the metadata for either the data set or the journal article. So we can actually ingest that relational information but about those two entities. Um, also tracking the provenance. So it's really important that we continue to build trust in the provenance of that and, and ensuring that we can um, allow the community to view that but also looking at things like multiple assertions. So as an example, with that exact example that I used, if the journal publisher has in their metadata that this article cited this data set and the repository has that this data set was cited by this article and a third party has that, we now have three sources saying the same thing and building trust and credibility in the information that we have. So really important. And then continuing to um, explore services to support metadata completion. We did a bit of work this year around 
domain specific uh, repositories and enhancing subject metadata. And so um, there's also different techniques that we want to explore and look at for, for the year ahead around um, metadata completion and how we can support members in, in enhancing that. And then continuing on our efforts around metadata schema evolution, the metadata working group has um, continued to dedicate um, a huge amount of time and effort towards this. It's it's just um, really, really amazing to see the, all the work that goes into this. Um, but also looking at how we can improve some of our processes, um, uh, particularly from, I guess, a technology point of view. So it's easier to implement some of the schema changes and how do we break those up into um, smaller chunks or, or different uh, different types of schema changes to ensure that we don't necessarily need to wait for an entire schema release or major schema release to do a smaller change. And so been doing a bit of work on that as well. Then obviously tracking research outputs, so improving visualizations and analytical services. This allows us to better understand the impact and influence of scholarly work throughout the research life cycle. And so this is continuing on the efforts um, is similar to the example that I showed you of the DMP ID and the visualizations there, making sure that we we able to both from an API point of view support that, but also um, in, in various interfaces and so these are visualizations, dashboards, community efforts in thinking about the responsible use of metrics. So um, making sure that we, we move forward together and, and um, cautiously, I guess, um, and then partnering with uh, policy stakeholders to, to support this work. Then looking into discovery, uh, making sure that our members metadata is um, continuing to be discovered and is easily discoverable so that the broader community can locate access and effectively utilize the wealth of research resources that are registered by our community. We know that obviously members are registering research outputs and resources with data sites so that they are discoverable and they can be reused to further the particular discipline and, and share information and advanced knowledge. And so it's really important that in supporting this, that we have good um, good mechanisms to harvest metadata. So we're launching a new harvesting service and providing our own data dumps. We really um, have been thankful to the Internet Archive that have been producing a community data dump to date, an annual data dump, but also ensuring that we can provide dumps that are segmented. And this was some of the work that we did with the community in understanding that, okay, we would like to look at segmented views of the data. And so looking to address those, ingesting metadata into the data site commons. So um, and my guess data site commons is the, the front end interface, but making sure that um, everything behind it and the data file that we continue to ingest metadata that's useful to the community and then continuing to aggregate metrics and addressing some of these downstream discovery use cases. The global access program um, is, is really key. We uh, launched the global access fund, but through 2024, we want to make sure that we're empowering uh, global communities through, through equitable access to the research infrastructure. And our efforts are really here to expand and deepen our support in lesser represented regions. Um, so a couple of things here. One is that we continue uh, the Global Access Fund. Uh, we've had the first um, call for proposals that was launched um, fairly recently and, and is um, about to close. Um, and then we have um, dedicated community engagement across the regions, uh, the Global Access Program team, um, Arturo, Mohamed and Bosson are doing a really fantastic job uh, together with Gabriela um, in, in making sure that we are focused on dedicated community engagement within specific regions and, and listening to the community and then also continuing on our outreach and partnership activities um, across the globe. And then uh, finally, the, the data citation corpus is, is a big effort. We've launched the data citation corpus prototype. Um, this is still a prototype and um, we obviously understood a lot more around the process and had a working pipeline and um, a lot to look at around kind of in, ingesting data from multiple sources, but also being able to harvest and get additional metadata fields from different partners across the ecosystem. Uh, the effort here is to integrate 
um, this into the data site technology, the core technology and expand our coverage, both in terms of the the, the depth and the breadth of coverage um, within the data citation corpus and making sure that we address these downstream use cases and making sure that we solidify the role of the data citation corpus as a pivotal resource in the research community that helps us move forward the, the um, data reuse and data citation practices uh, globally and making sure that it's used as an important, valuable research insight. And so the effort here is scaling the, the prototype um, into the MVP, um, integrating this into the various data site discovery services, obviously through an iterative process step by step. And so we can't do it all at once and just breaking that up and then making sure that we continue to ingest from additional sources. Um, currently, we have uh, both the uh, what we have from Crossref data sites and the CZI science um, um, machine learning algorithm that they ran and some uh, metadata from uh, Envoy EBI and pulling that all together. And we want to extend, extend beyond that. We've done a lot of work and uh, had a lot of conversations across the community um, with key partners. And, and next year, I think we'll see some fundamental um, uh, work happening there and moving that forwards. And so with that, um, I want to jump back to the mentee, the same link um, that you used before. I'll, I'll advance it to the next screen. Um, here, we want to reflect on our strategic plan and the priorities that we presented looking forwards. What are you excited about in 2024? Not specifically, you don't have to uh, stick with um, exactly what I've said. Um, please do throw in. It, it's great to hear new ideas and things. Anything that you think um, is, is exciting and something that we can kind of build on as a community in 2024 would be lovely to hear. So let me... Um, Quickly go to the next slide. And so you should see that if you click into the link, you might have to click go to the next slide. I think it sometimes sticks on one slide. So if you just click go to the next slide, then you should be able to see, see that. And a reminder, you're also welcome to, at any point, um, drop in any questions into the Q&A, um, and, and we can also start a, a, addressing those. <clears throat> yeah, seeing the outcomes of the Global Access Fund, I think that's really exciting, building core core infrastructure and technology and communities, um, and then funding for those communities, I think somebody's added there, um, the Global Data Citation Corpus. Um, it was a big effort to get that un un underway and um, <clears throat> really moving along nicely. We had the Global Data Citation Corpus Summit um, in September in Washington, D.C., and um, a lot of support and recognition for, for the work that's been done. Yeah, I love that. And in kind of reshaping the merit and rewards system um, at the summit, we had uh, different tracks um, from, I guess, funding funding point of view, uh, but also looking at things like tenure and promotion and how we, how we build this into those workflows and engaging with th those key stakeholders that are making decisions around this. Um, obviously noting that we, we want to be responsible and so it's it's I guess context-based decisions we don't want to necessarily look at a pure count as this is good this is bad but how do we as a community build this into into the workflow Let's see if there's anything else that comes up Okay, I think I will go to then the last slide um, just to get an idea of the, the, um, some of the priorities and things that we're looking to focus on for, for next year. Obviously, this is not set in stone and we still need to go through our process. This was the, the first um, um, brainstorm of this, but if you could, uh, if you were to rank these um, in any way, um, how would you rank these? And so this also has some of the uh, priorities from earlier today when we ran this session. So 
um, empowering global communities through equitable access was was um, at at the um, top there. But it would be great to see um, um, what others others think. Um, and this will will give a moment or two because it takes a bit of a moment, I know, to to drag and drop them. Um, Not sure if we'll see movement. Well, I guess if they're in the same order, then they um, won't move um, much. But oh, there, some movement. <laughs> um, metadata completeness, I think, got a bit of a bump there. Um, we'll give it a few more minutes. Yeah, feel free also alongside this to post in the chat, um, share, um, share any thoughts, ask any questions. <clears throat> I'm scanning the chat also to check if there's anything. I don't think so, Paul, if I'm correct. Yeah, no questions so far. See quite a few people in there, and so um, not quite everyone from the session, but I know that uh, sometimes these mentee polls are <laughs> not everyone wants to, or um, you're busy listening in, but it's also difficult to pull out a mobile phone or get to the tab. But um, thanks for for those of you that are um, sharing some insights. It, it is um, very very useful in in helping us inform inform our uh, direction moving forwards. Okay, I think um with that I don't want to um keep everyone. I think um the the next session starts in about 15 minutes. Um I'm happy to stay on for a bit. So uh, we'll probably um end the recording. Uh but if there's anyone that wants to ask any questions or anything, um feel free to stay on. Um I'm I'm happy to stay on for couple more minutes. I know that the link does have to close down in probably four minutes just so they we the, the team can set up the the next session. But just wanted to call out um you as the community, thank you all for all of your efforts um towards data sites. We we do this as a collective and it's not possible um doing doing it um as uh, without a global community. So that's that's really, really important. So thank you all for your efforts and Thank you to the amazing team at Datasite and the staff, um, and also particularly the team that set up the um, this community meeting today. Um, I know there's still a number of sessions that are still coming up, um, but um, yeah, thank you for joining, and, and we look forward to continuing to work with you all. <laughs>